Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 14th episode of Tissues of the Day, a comedy show about queer culture and relationships. I am your host, David, and my co-host is the lovely Robert. <laughs> and today's episode is about charisma. We are joined by our very special guest, my bro, my what? bro from the same mo. <laughs> That's right. Tove. Hello. Wow. <laughs> Happy to be here. Tove, a.k.a. Chris O'Neill, a uh, student uh, journalist studying for visual journalism at Western Washington University um, and hoping to have a nice, fulfilling career afterwards. Nice, fulfilling career. Well, this <laughs> David, is- David, please, this can is you the... deliver that line again? The, <laughs> the, yeah, the right. three, what was the three terms you used there? <laughs> three, what, my the... bro from another mo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you had a third one in there. Oh, no, it was, no, your bro from another no named Toe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right, okay. yep. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> good, good. That's right. Um, Not many so, people know that we were separated at birth by 11 years as a different parent. <laughs> yeah, he got the beard. <laughs> David got none of the facial hair. Yeah, that's right. He got the top hair. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got yeah. the top hair. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that people with shaved heads on top, long beards on bottom are just upside down heads? Yeah, right. Yeah. Isn't that the Chris D'Elia joke? I saw. Yeah, it is a Chris D'Elia yeah. joke. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the incarnation um, of that joke. Oh, God. It's that. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about charisma. But before we do, we put our guest in the hot seat with rapid fire questions. Toph, are you ready to answer some rapid fire questions? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. So uh, give as short an answer as you can. Robert and I will try not to have any commentary. Um, but there might be a standout answer that we'll ask you to elaborate on by the gotcha. end. Okay. Are you ready, Robert? Ready. Okay, so Toph, when's the last time you were offended? Last time I was offended? Uh, hmm. I have to think about that. Ah, uh, shoot. Uh, I think probably the Burger King drive through when um, they didn't <laughs> Say no the more. Bar- we'll get into it later. <laughs> yeah. Stop there. <laughs> Amazing. Toph, drama or comedy? Uh, whew. Drama, probably. Mm. I want to say comedy, but I think it's drama that I mm. gravitate towards. Mm. Nice. Cupcake or cup of tea? <laughs> you still crack it up, the Burger King. Cupcake or cup of tea? I think Maybe. I dropped. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, cupcake. Uh, country or city? Country. Dance club or pub? Pub. What's something you're addicted to currently? Cigarettes. Uh, what's something that keeps you awake at night? Cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, would you rather pan- punch a person or slap a person? Slap. Mm. How would you describe your aesthetic? My aesthetic? Hobo chic. <laughs> Uh, are you a driver or a passenger? I hate driving. I'd rather be a passenger. Okay. What's a niche on social media more people should know about? Mm, niche. Oh, shoot. Let me think. That's a tough one. What do I like? I Honestly, I just like random bizarre art on like Instagram. I mean, I, yeah. but I don't know if that's like something enough people don't like already but i like it <laughs> are you a listener or a talker uh i've been called both uh probably more of a talker nice and what's something you are looking forward to uh graduating getting out of the the old folks house <laughs> so i can get my own place pursue a career I just assumed you were like you were retired yourself. Like yeah, you're yeah, an old yeah. Yeah, like, so I was like, yeah, right. Wow, yeah. you must moisturize because you look just great like, for your age. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bathe in baby oil every day. Just submerged. <laughs> it's like the modern day vampire. So you know, bathing yeah. in like the blood of virgins, like <laughs> just, baby yeah. oil. Yeah, exactly. I'm you're just, just like full. An organic reed. That's how I breathe. You know what mm. I mean? Like the water reeds, and then I just emerge with it just Losing off the face every day. <laughs> so such such a picture drawn of that. Well, yeah. <laughs> Did you have yeah. another uh, question, Robert, or can I no, follow up on Burger let's King? Let's cut it there. I heard you say <laughs> and, so I was assuming you were rapping. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I I want to interpolate a bit of this. Obviously, you know Tove way better than I, 
but um, based off some of these answers, this is what this is what I'm gonna gather. I'm gonna go with like the strong silent type, but like when given the opportunity, is kind of the person who will really like go, dive into a story and tell you about something. And um, I think definitely like is, is kind of like the quirky like absurdist humor type. <laughs> um, yeah. How, am I am I accurate? Yeah, that's like ninety nine point eight percent accuracy. It's better than my <laughs> hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. also kill germs. <laughs> yeah, if yeah, personality right. traits were like by t- bacteria, you right. correctly <laughs> identify. No, I lost it. I you lost, lost the analogy. Okay. You lost yeah. it. You're halfway it's there, right. and you just slammed on the brakes. <laughs> Can we talk about this offensive Burger King drive-through? Yes, because I know about it's... it, but Robert needs to know about this Burger King. Please. No, it's just this local one I go to all the time, and they, you know, they they hate their jobs. It's pretty obvious. But uh, you know, really, the the one thing that annoys me is like the barbecue sauce thing. I love barbecue sauce. I hate ketchup because yeah. yeah. I hate. But I, actually, I like ketchup. I just hate the, the packets. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's like, I'll just go with barbecue sauce. But they always give you like one, even if you ordered like 10 McNuggets and like chicken. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter how much you order. They give you like one barbecue like thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, can I get another one? They're like, oh, that's going to be 50 cents. And I'm like, OK, like, I don't care. And then they still give you one. So it really, it's a stupid what? thing. It's just but it happens all the time. And I can You're tell- willing to pay for this thing. And they're still like, no one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, rationing yeah, exactly. it? Is, 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 are, is this like a wartime effort? I, like- I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've worked in retail before and, and you know, you're like, oh, great. Everyone asks for barbecue sauce. I could see that being like, oh, I don't want to go in the back and get more barbecue sauce. It's such a pain in the butt. I guess that's what it is. I feel mm. like, but I'm not sure. Oh, otherwise, oh, there crazy. could be other people that are like, I want five barbecue sauces. Otherwise, yeah. I'm calling your manager. So maybe that's what it is. I just want two. I just want two yeah. barbecue sauces. They, they get to the drive up window and they have the email pre-written. Like, if you don't give it to me, I'm yeah. hitting send to your manager. Right. Yeah. yeah. The little button under the desk, they're, they're hitting that when I'm there. <laughs> and then barbecue, is there like Burger King SWAT shows up. Is there a popular um, term for like the male version of Karen's? Do we have that yet? Oh, yeah, oh right. God, I'm dropping like flies. Ooh. Oh, no. Kyle's, Kyle's, hmm, yeah. I don't know what the what it, what is the Karen of the male world. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I have a question though on the topic of like t- uh, fast food places. Have you ever had somebody who you've taken to a fast food place hoping to really be like, oh, you've never had blank, and you take them there, and then they were just really disappointed, and somehow you then you realize like, oh yeah, all my memories of this are kind of like just childhood joy and like <laughs> it's really kind of shitty uh, uh i did that recently when i took my friend who um wasn't from canada and uh-huh. i took him to arby's because he's done like mcdonald's and burger places but i'm like oh you haven't done arby's I'm like right. that's like roast beef sandwiches with the like liquid cheddar and i took <laughs> yeah. him and we, we ate it and at the end i'm like so <laughs> so and he's like yeah it's not very good <laughs> Oh, yeah. He, he like what would he do? he compared it to? He's like it's just like sliced ham that kind of has a beef flavor, <laughs> right? Like, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah no, I know. I'm I'm probably the worst judge of that though, because like I buy gas station hot dogs, and they've made me sick like before, but I still go for gas station hot dogs. <laughs> so uh, I'm like the last person to be like, oh, you know what, you got to try. <laughs> you know what I mean? As I like blow the lint off of it. Here you go. It's good. You'll love it. The texture is amazing. (laughs) Have you had a taquito in a hot dog? Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm I'm that dude. I'm totally that dude. Oh, tough. That is the most bro-y thing. I love it. Yeah. (laughs) Dipping strange. I did strange things into my milkshakes. You know what I mean? Like that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Toast version of like the that like that song, like the milkshake song is like right. my milkshake brings all the taquitos to the yard. <laughs> just dipping <laughs> them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot I'm dogs just, like, and maybe in. some more. <laughs> and just eat it. That's great. <laughs> it, I could give you barbecue. Milkshake yeah. hot dogs. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. What is it like? I, I could teach you, but I have to charge. It's like I could give you more barbecue, but I have to charge. Yeah, yeah. Fifty cents. And I won't give it to you anyway yeah. because yeah. this is this is a Burger King, and we don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god, that would definitely be my version of that song. <laughs> I could offer, but I'd have to charge. Then I wouldn't give it to you. Nope, forget it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. It's just like 
And then he cuts into next thank you because then he's like serving yeah. the next customer. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh sorry for that weird jump cut. Uh Zoom well, Zoom is okay, but the Wi Fi in my room really sucks, uh, is all that was happening. So the uh, you know, a random dictionary definition from uh, from wordnick.com, the only authority on language. Yeah. Uh the highest says uh yeah, it says <laughs> Uh, charisma is a rare personal quality attributed to leaders who arouse fervent popular devotion and enthusiasm, but also personal magnetism or charm. Okay. And yeah, I liked what you guys were saying about it being yeah. persuasive. So deep question. What are the pros and cons of charisma? Okay. Uh, Robert, can I throw it to you? Yes, certainly. Pros and cons. So the pros, let's start with the easier stuff. Uh, it, it makes life easier, honestly. And I think it is just ultimately tied to the fact that we are social animals, right? So if you have a social advantage, it's going to benefit you in many ways in life. So it comes down to those job interviews, uh, to, you know, meeting with people at a party, networking, uh, that introduction with a potential partner, there's, it's just like transactions, winning somebody over for a business proposition, or, you know, if you're haggling for like a discount on something, if you have a bartering opportunity, I think that charisma, which also equates to persuasion, and it, I don't want to see persuasion as like a negative thing necessarily, but just your ability to sort of like socially like bend to or for someone um, and, and, and change up the scenario to kind of like Again, I can't come up with any better word other than manipulate that situation. Yeah. Uh, but not in a negative sense. Um, that is definitely the pros. I think the cons would be is that there's um, sometimes with that charisma, I think a lot of the time the charisma is tied to almost a social chameleon quality. You can lose yourself in that, you know, where like if you are so charismatic and you can like adjust and shift for all these different social scenarios and um, makeups that you might like you might start losing on like exactly who am I and what am I going to like what am I going to stand for in terms of my social encounters and what am I not hmm. I think there might also be greater expectations of you because sometimes people are like oh like John or Sally you're really charismatic you can do this thing that's a social occasion be it like public speaking or go you know like go convince that group or go lead that thing um, and it may not actually be of interest to you or may not be something that you're totally confident in doing. So I think the cons can be that it it can set some unrealistic expectations sometimes for people who just naturally have a social edge. Yeah, I'm hearing kind of like charisma is its own thing while your actual skill, like your competence is one thing and your personal values and what you're actually going to care about doing are also another thing and if these are not aligned you can find yourself you know thrown into the deep end about something you don't care about that you're not good at mm -hmm. is, is that does that kind of make sense yeah because i've encountered people who are very charismatic uh but you can like kind of like drop them into a subject matter that they may not necessarily like really jive with and they all just kind of like go dead but they're still going to be engaging and they're still going to be like charismatic but they're just like like something behind the eye something you know like that just this isn't for them and so mm -hmm. some people will just see the char charisma first and foremost and then that can set an expectation even though they may yeah. not necessarily be connected to the stuff that you're engaging with yeah um what are you thinking tof as far as pros and cons yeah i agree with the gist of that um you know I've been called charismatic a few times and I honestly have found myself in a position where I'm like, wait, I don't know how to do this. Like, why does everybody think I know how to do this? So I agree with that sentiment. Like, I think the con part is, um, you know, if you don't have intelligence and wisdom, like we we're kind of touching on really? earlier, D &D. um, that you can find yourself in, uh, in a position where you can't, you know, you can't, um, produce, you know, you're like, oh yeah, I can handle that. And everyone believes you because you have this charisma. And then when you get down to it, you're like, wait, I can't, I can't talk my way into understanding the mechanics of something that I, you know, that I've never approached before. So yeah, I agree yeah. with that. And as far as the pros, I mean, they're pretty obvious. Yeah. Like social, social advantage for sure. It's just that it's kind of like the turbo boost on a car in a racing game or something, right? Like you can yeah. use it to get ahead, but <laughs> you still need the skill of, of like being able to maneuver 
um, that's a really good the analogy, race. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you can get um, that and, speed, but you, if you don't know how to control the car, you could crash. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I want to circle over to like the thing I was saying about uh, what a person ends up caring about, like what to what end are they using their charisma? Like, you know, the classic example are politicians. I think anybody can think off the top of their head. What is a charismatic politician versus a politician who literally could might as well be a wet blanket just sitting in a chair um and the trouble is like because people have different values you know the charisma is just like a tool being used toward these specific like goals that they have politically um Mm. and then you get into really yucky territory where their charisma is used you know for very selfish very like um I don't want to say evil, but like right. just very corrupt ends. Um, mm. You know, usually it's just about greed, but sometimes it is just like just a lack of yeah, yeah. egocentrism and like um, lack of interest in other people, which is kind of the same thing. Mm. Yeah, and I think I think that egocentric qualities can uh, definitely be built be built up over time if somebody innately has like a good sense of sense of or has a good charisma and they have this capacity to socially connect and build themselves up uh, in a very uh, positive light if and then people are going to feed that and can kind of add to their ego in that well if their actual intelligence and their values in that have more sinister means then will that spread like problematic because then you have a person who has really good charisma who can get into a position of power but their objectives and their values and their intelligence is kind of not really benefiting those others are engaging with well mm. then you've got hitler in the, the car works, crash you know like <laughs> yeah. yeah or a car crash yeah hitler was a big old car crash you know like those those yeah. there are leaders because of their charisma can get into positions of power and that's a problem is that like if you have that tool and it builds you up into a position of power but the what's the agenda behind it ultimately is not beneficial to the world or to those you have power over well yeah you know let's look at history <laughs> yeah, absolutely public relations and social media are kind of like um, a charisma booster, right? Like they're sort of like a charisma smoke screen for yeah. some of these people that uh, might not have innate charisma. That's why they hire people like yeah. that. And then, yeah, I mean, like I agree with what you're saying more yeah. or less, but yeah, well, it, it makes the problem worse if they're already that bad. I just sure. envision this like dark, like post apocalyptic type world where people can actually get like liquid charisma in like injectables <laughs> yeah, just... and they can be like shoot up with it or something it's like yeah, do, yeah, right. do you want to get ahead do you want some charisma and he just has like a trench coat he opens full of like vials of like right charisma and he's like yeah, even though he's selling a... charisma he's got to work in a back alley still <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. i need that. a booster i need a booster <laughs> yeah, right. going yeah, for yeah, a job yeah. interview sir, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sir how good is this product if you haven't yeah. taken it corporate yet sir, he's like are you nah, wearing you know, sweatpants just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's a judgment on him i don't i don't buy things off people with no pockets <laughs> you literally have 20 <laughs> syringes of charisma but you're still yeah. wearing sweatpants <laughs> yeah right yeah now. <laughs> yeah and then and then he takes a little swig of the charisma and they're like right. actually i don't care what you're wearing i do want to buy yeah. that <laughs> you know what? yeah i'll try well, that sounds sweatpants right, that's are right. coming back in <laughs> <laughs> um uh robert who's mm. a public figure you dislike while still recognizing their charm or their charisma okay i i did not think through this as well so i am <laughs> mad at you for asking me this first but uh (laughs) the first one that came to mind honestly was like kanye west Ooh, okay um i think is a really good example of somebody who's like he innately has swagger right it put him into a position of power he's a really good producer like he's he can mix music like no other so he's got some talent obviously and he's got the charisma that's allowed him to navigate that industry he's in um but he has so many examples of like you know, of what we're talking about, that the values behind what he's trying to do um, and his, like, emotional intelligence is just stunted, you know, mm. because, like, the classic one is the Taylor Swift, like, interruption where he, like, basically ruined her moment to highlight somebody else. And, it, like, it didn't need to happen that way. So that's the first one that comes to mind now, but I'm going to keep thinking on it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Toph, how about you? I like that one a lot. Uh, but uh, I guess Jake Paul probably he's like Ooh. someone that i really can't stand but uh obviously has you know on like parallel charisma qualities or whatever 
and he just knows how to capitalize on it. But, you know, like I said, there's not, I don't know. He's kind of like a well hated person, but also well liked person. So he's, he rides that line for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't agree with, with like what he does. You know what I mean? Like it, it, a lot of his ex- exploitation kind of tactics and, and like shock jockey kind of stuff. I don't know if people even say that anymore, <laughs> but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm not really like a fan of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot going on with both of those. I don't even yeah. know where to begin <laughs> Yeah, yeah. because it's yeah. like, uh, you know, without being too mean, like you can tell when you listen to both of these guys that they are intelligent, but about very, very specific things. Um, mm-hmm. When they start overreaching, they sound, they sound dumb, frankly. Um, yeah. And like, it, it, I think it just speaks depth. to that. Yeah. 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 And I think it speaks to that idea of, um, you know, they've had an amount of charm that got them to a particular point in life. And then, I don't know, maybe they just assumed they were all good. Um, Mm -hmm. Because like the weird thing about Kanye is like he's tried to be more open about his struggles with like bipolar disorder, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, at the same time, like Jake Paul is like extremely uh, what's the word? he doesn't do any of that stuff. I can't remember the last time I've seen him making any sort of like positive, like PR move. Basically all he does is antagonize people. The last thing I heard about him was he is trying to get into boxing and like, he's trying to box this, like he's trying to get into MMA. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty like professional fighter. And Mm -hmm. the fighter is like, not having it like he just does not give a shit about like the game that uh jake paul is playing Mm -hmm. and it's really funny to watch because like yeah this fighter legit does not care and that makes the fight that makes the fight better (laughs) and (laughs) like a ton of his sales are like people that just want to see him get get his clock clean right which hasn't happened yet so it's kind of like it just keeps like people you know what i mean like he's he's brilliantly i hate to use that term but he is playing Mm -hmm. it very well like where he he builds the hate hype and the, you know, the good hype, whatever you want to call totally. it. It's all hype. It's all pure hype. So it plays into his hands regardless. It doesn't matter if you totally. hate him. He's going to make money off of it. So, yeah. 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 You know, yeah, totally. There's, there's two things I'm realizing in this. One is that we also have to recognize in that the people we identify, we're identifying as people we may not like because it is informed by our own values. Right. right. So like, I yeah. like person X has charisma and i don't like them because the agenda they often have behind it is around gain and uh self-profit and money and that so that's obviously you know that's part of like everybody has those biases and stuff but it's something that informs whether like i'm just seeing there's a like a bit of a fallacy in the sense of like we are trying to identify people who have charisma but ultimately we don't like and it's just like does that make them a bad person it's more based off our own value that aside i was just thinking yeah i'm sorry yeah yeah my fault i interrupted you could finish it i was just thinking i'm like i just thought of a whole new category of people who could potentially fall into this category right i just said category twice (laughs) um (laughs) and it would be like youtubers you know there must be so like i don't know enough about that world and it's kind of ironic that i'm saying this especially because our show goes (laughs) onto youtube but it's just like there must be so many people who have succeeded in that world because their charisma but they're not necessarily like really doing it for a very good like socially progressive reasons or for like yeah. the benefit of others. Uh, yeah. so I'm sure I, I wish I knew more like YouTube celebrities, but I bet there's a ton out there. I think for me though, what I don't like about both those characters personally is like lack of nuance and like right. lack of like more substantial, like artistic qualities, I guess for lack of a better right. description. So Jake Paul is like, like I use the term exploitation because he's exploiting hype. It, you're not really gaining much from watching. I mean, it's pure entertainment. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's got junk food entertainment. But um, if it's for me personally, if if it's all the junk food entertainment, then I kind of lose interest. That's really all it is. I'm not saying he's an yeah. evil person or good per whatever. You know what I mean? Like I just don't particularly like that use of it. Mm, if that makes right. sense. Yeah. Uh, Toast point actually goes back to one of our previous episodes, David, around sort of like the value of media, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, I think it's a really good example of like if what you produce is too much 
just junk food media, it ultimately starts feeling like you feel the crash of it. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. it's just another like sensationalization or, right. uh, you know, a thing like I'm not learning something from this. I'm not gaining a skill from this. It's just like I don't feel a contribution. I just feel like I'm eating more junk. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm touching on. Yeah. Or yeah. thinking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Agreed. I mean, you also took the words out of my mouth, Toph, when you talked about nuance, because I was going to say like to both of your points and, you know, a public figure I dislike while still recognizing their charisma is Trump. And like, you know, and he's kind of like fallen by the wayside now, which is wild. I can't believe it. I still can't believe that <laughs> that's happened. Yeah. But yeah. um, uh, you took the words out of my mouth when you said nuance, because I think largely uh you know we have li- we live in a culture that values polarization more than it values nuance because mm-hmm. polarization is emotional and like emotions drive uh profit and it's just like I, it just like keeps this machine going yep. um and it, like it's also cleaner and easier to understand right as black and white like you are yeah, a yeah. or b you're not somewhere in between yeah yeah, yeah definitely and you know we can't get into this too much um, in this episode, but maybe we'll talk about it another time. But like right cults are a classic like charisma trap, you know, and this idea of um, tr- like traumatized people really identifying with the quote unquote charismatic leader, I think is like really really that's like a really deep subject um yeah. so i might need to do some more research on that but like yeah. i think that's a major possibility and i even touched on it in the social media video that i wrote a couple mm-hmm. months ago where it was just like uh i can't remember the exact line but it was just like vulnerable people uh lonely people people with varying degrees of mental health situations going on are more likely to fall into the trap of really identifying with a charismatic leader and thinking that charismatic leader has like all the answers and is going to save them whether it's an entertainer a political figure a friend like whatever you know yeah you're talking about the cult of personality exactly yeah 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 100 percent. yeah i mean like the unprecedented amount or use of like twitter for trump i mean he was like i said like he was smart in using that right i'm you know he's not an idiot um, but I don't agree with the stuff he said. And even he like it kind of has admitted that he doesn't agree with everything that he said. You know, it was really <laughs> yeah. more about just getting getting a visceral reaction, right? Exactly. And and channeling that visceral reaction for your purposes. I think that's the exactly. part that I kind of am not too fond of, right? Yeah. Yeah, because again, it's the power over people. It's not empowering to the people that you're leading um yeah yeah hey hey uh hey robert i'm gonna ask you another one Mm. can charisma be taught (laughs) (laughs) oh gosh this question too this this is why i love this topic and 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 um, hate it because i'm challenged by it but that's how we grow (laughs) um Mm. that i don't have a clear answer for that I think there is so many factors into it in terms of like just your genetic makeup, because honestly, one of the qualities that make charisma the boost, the booster is physical look, right? Mm -hmm. Like there are some people who are more charismatic, I think benefit from the fact they're more attractive based off of the standards of attractiveness at that time in in history, right? I think it's an undeniable thing that charisma and physical look are tied. So some have a genetic advantage. Um, In terms of their physical look, I think it also comes to a bit of their social um, just wiring. They're a little bit better at like connecting and understanding. They have better mirror neurons where they can match another person, understand their body language and how they work. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it is also partly, um, so it's partly, I'm trying to remember the term between uh, nature versus nurture. So I think part of it is nurture also where it is how you're raised if you're socialized enough, socialized with a lot of different people taught how to have empathy and to connect with people and to have like give space and take space you know like it's it is a fine balancing act because part of i think what makes charisma isn't just about being like look at me and i'm big and i pull all the attention it's also providing space for other people too because then they feel included and uh connected to you so some of the favorite like actors right a lot of the artists that we really connect to and find charisma in 
are those who are like, they understand me. And they're like, you know, like they, they like, I feel like I can relate to them. So it can't just be about like, wow, they're powerful and driving. It's also like I can relate to them and I can connect with them and I see vulnerability in them. So there's so many layers to teach that. I think yes, partly because of the nurture portion, but I think some are just innately born with more advantages. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty comprehensive answer. <laughs> yeah, Do you have totally. anything you want to yeah, add? No, I, I totally agree. It's intersectional, right? Yeah. So charisma, you could have more charisma and physical looks, less charisma. And like he was talking about empathy, right? Which is probably in the case of, I mean, not to point fingers, but Jake Paul is a very handsome dude. But like you said, when he's- I'm looking him talks, up. Yeah. When he, <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. But when he talks like for an extended period of time about a particular subject, he, you know, he just doesn't seem interested. Do you know what I mean? Unless it's about yep. building the hype kind of a thing. So he tends to cut conversation short. I don't know if it's because he's not an eloquent speaker or if he just doesn't want to, but that's just an example. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's intersectional. So in all those intersections, could you learn to be more attractive? Sure. You know, there's certain techniques, right? Uh, clothing, style, that kind of stuff. Can you learn to be more empathetic? Yeah, arguably. But it's like, like he said, you know, one lifetime, how much can you climb? Um, you know what I mean? Probably on, only a certain bit. So definitely people are likely genetically predisposed to being more charismatic. Like they just have that tool set granted to them, uh, through both nature and nurture. Um, you know, like for me, like I grew up with a pastor as a father, so I was carted around people of all ages, right? People that were vulnerable, people that were powerful, all those kinds of things. And as a five-year-old i just started talking to all these people because i had no one to talk to so i think that mm -hmm. kind of gave me the ability to just immediately go right through the wall that people kind of put up and just and take the first step with confidence i think confidence is a huge thing for charisma you can't i don't think you can have charisma um or at least it's quite diminished without confidence you mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah, yeah. I, Tofi, you're like master of metaphors i really like that whole idea <laughs> of like you only have so far to climb uh, and, yeah. and if some people are born higher up that mountain, right, they are innately going to get further than you, than the person right. who was born further down. Yeah. Or even just stay there and still be better off. I mean, that's just kind of how things go with yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah check your, definitely... check your charisma privilege. <laughs> check your yeah. charisma yeah. privilege. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I know. Yeah. How does one, how does one evaluate how charismatic they are? Like how, right. like if let's say the listener is sitting there and they're like, Am I charismatic or am I, you know, just one of those normal so-and-sos? How could somebody go about seeing, you know, where they're at? I guess it's just like overall, how well do does it seem like conversations go for you? Right. <laughs> right? You heard yeah. it here first on our show. We have this trademark. We are making a charisma <laughs> yeah, right. test and the we're going to put it out there and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That is my but, charisma with yeah. a bad agenda behind it because I'm trying to make money <laughs> off there of my like, <laughs> Yeah. It's set to hit right aid in six yeah. months. Yeah. But that, <laughs> yeah. how breakthrough would that be is if you could actually measure charisma? Well, yeah, I mean, because that's the beginning to then developing the formula that we sell in the back alley wearing sweatpants. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wearing sweatpants. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Different vials um, for different aspects, right? Oh, this is more empathy. This is more, more good looks. This is, you know, totally things, right. Yeah. Totally. Cause that's huge. Like, you know, there's a great book by Dale Carnegie. Um, it's like a classic in self-help. It's called how to win friends and influence people. And it goes, a lot of it is just about like to be more charismatic, just be really nice to other people and just like be more serving of them and like their ego. And magically they will be more like, <laughs> they'll be more interested in what you have to say because you took that first step. And yeah. you know, that's like a very like simple overview of the book, but there's, I think there's a lot to that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, studying journalism, it's an invest, uh, what do you call it? an interview technique? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I usually prep people like for like, I mean, I love talking anyway, so it just comes naturally to me, but I usually talk to them about their interests. Um, but it, like, it's been told to me before though, I am actually genuinely interested in what people have to say. So I think mm -hmm. that's what makes it easy for me. I think mm -hmm. if you're, if you don't seem like you're like, Oh, well, what, what are you into? Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. You know what I mean? Like you got, you got to have like a yeah. sort of energy to it. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely that people pick up on, 
That's why Pope don't... and David were separated at birth because David just hates <laughs> people and he doesn't want to listen to them. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I mean, it's really true, though. I think people <laughs> what do... the fact that you hate people, David? <laughs> it's, it's really true, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the idea of, like, it sounds like you're talking about authenticity. Like, I think yeah. people have a pretty good nose for authenticity, especially in person. Um, mm -hmm. Like, if they feel like they're being... Uh, if someone's taking an interest in them. However, right. like, I... Um, there's another great book by Malcolm Gladwell called Talking to Strangers, where he talks a lot about, like uh how we don't have as much of a good nose for whether people are lying to right. us right mm -hmm. um so like yeah i feel like we can pick up whether someone is interested in what we're saying and whether they're like reflecting back to us but whether we can pick up whether what oh my god how they're talking to us mm -hmm. is as honest i think that's kind of like a you know, uh, a bit of a bug in, in human socialization. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. Critical thinking is supposed to make up for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that's, that requires Oof. more training, you know, definitely. Um, that's something I think should be taught in high school is critical thinking as like a mandatory course. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think they try in English classes, but the books are always so boring. That's why I, I, didn't I feel that's well like in critical English analysis <laughs> and, and yeah. maybe it's kind of the same thing. I mean, it's, it's partly thinking too, but like just analysis of like the text that you read. Like I did mm -hmm. like English and English lit and like advanced English and stuff. I just never was like, like ever, I never really felt like I went through like any class in high school where it's like, why do you think this might be right or wrong? Yeah. You know, like, why, yeah. like mm -hmm. how, why should we maybe potentially question the author or the source? Right. Like it was, it was never, it was just like, can you interpret the story? But yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even like debate skills, because debate teaches mm -hmm. you to really look at um, as many of the facts as you can and understand how fallacies work. Um, right. And yeah, that's also something that does not come naturally to people. Yeah. We could go on and on. Yeah. It is time. It is time now uh. for <laughs> our game for the fun right. of the show. <laughs> nice. um, so today. <laughs> We are going to play two truths <laughs> and one lie. It is a very popular game among teenagers, and I have stolen it from them. No, nice. I I'm sure I've played it as a teenager, and that's where you I use your charisma it, so. and appropriated it. <laughs> yeah, Proper yeah, yeah. Way to go, I game. totally came up with it myself. <laughs> um. So okay. So who wants to tell their stories first? Not me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> then I will go first. Okay. Okay. So. In what I'm about to say, there's two truths, there's one lie, and you will have about a minute to try to figure out uh, which one it is, and then, uh, yeah, and then we'll see from there. So, here are my three statements. I am allergic to gluten. I have been to Germany and France. I own more than $5,000 of recording equipment. Oh, I know which one's the lie. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Germany and France. Okay, why? Because I know you own a crap ton of tech, and I know that you have a screwed up intestinal tract that makes you gluten intolerant. <laughs> yes, I've talked about it on the podcast. Yeah. Okay, are, are you also feeling certain, Toph? Which one do you think it is? Uh, you don't have $5,000 worth of equipment, actually. Oh! <gasps> Okay. Do we have any uh, questions that <laughs> that you want to clarify or? It's tell unfair me. for me. Okay, I, yeah. I already knew the first two. You know what yeah, I mean? like, tell I'm me. your brother, man. <laughs> he knows too much. I knew too much. You know what? I still want you to prove yourself. So, in each of those two countries, name your number one favorite thing you saw in each. Uh, in Germany, I really liked the city of Munich. Um, I liked the cobblestone roads, and uh, I liked quite a bit of the. Food. Then in France, I liked visiting the Arc de Triomphe. Aha! The whole circle. There is no cobblestone roads in Munich. It's a lie. Uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Was I in Munchen? Does it, does it have a different name? <laughs> Munchkin land. Yeah, yes. right. You were just tripping out on yeah. peyote and you were in yeah. Oz. You were in New Mexico the whole time. <laughs> oh, shit. That's why they... Why did it sound like German? I know what Spanish sounds like. <laughs> Um, oh, you trip out so, in German. That's your thing. Toph was, 
Toph was correct. I do not own more than five thousand dollars. I didn't think you had been to Europe. Yeah, he was fifteen. Yeah, even (laughs) younger. I think it was. uh, Oh, fourteen. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like right around middle school. All right. uh, Who's next? You want me to go next? Go. Okay. (laughs) Uh, I jumped out of a plane at fifteen thousand feet skydiving, uh, as it's colloquially called. In the Poconos. Um, I met Artie Lang, you know, the guy from Howard Stern, uh, briefly. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's a lot taller in person than I thought. Um, and one time I, uh, I used the Heimlich maneuver to save somebody's life. It was pretty stressful. <sighs> Tell me more about Artie Lang. He looked wasted. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Like he looked like, like he was <laughs> riding some kind of buzz, man. Like uh eyes were pretty I mean it was like I don't even know if it was early. It was probably early afternoon at the latest okay. or something like that. Yeah. I uh, sold him coffee. <laughs> how um where were you at when you performed the Heimlich? I was in a restaurant, actually. Um okay. it was like an Italian restaurant. And I just heard this person just like people freaking out and I just like in the zone, put them. I didn't do the like behind the thing because I like panicked. So I just got them to the chair and just did like the push thing. Uh-huh, you know what uh-huh. I mean? Because I remember like being taught that we had like that ridiculous dummy in high school. And if you guys had, it was like choking Charlie, it was like the worst name to give. <laughs> Sounds like a like, kid's a, game. An apparatus for high school kids. You know what I mean? Like we had fun yeah. with that name. But yeah, I was just like, oh my God, I got to do the choking Charlie thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. Choking Charlie, yeah. choking Charlie. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. And where questions? did you jump from? Yeah. What? What's that? In the plane. What? Where? What area were you jumping from? Like, like physically in the plane, or like what? No. State uh, the yeah, like the piece of land, the city. It was or town Poconos. Or yeah. Oh, it was in the po- Poconos. In the Poconos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. Hmm. This is this is a tough one. <laughs> okay. I I feel like I have my choice. Robert, do you have yours? I have my choice. Nobody okay, so, chokes at Italian restaurants, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, you, David? And then I feel like this is a this is a weaselly one in that maybe you jump from ten thousand feet instead of fifteen thousand feet. <laughs> okay. he, he jumped from a hundred feet. He was just <laughs> on a high platform. Yeah. Is that your final answer? Yeah, final answer. Final answer. Robert got me. Ah, no, <laughs> nice. but I never saw that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what about this uh, just little meatballs you could choke on a meatball oh totally could yeah that's, that's what choking yeah. charlie had he had a meatball <laughs> that came it was choking tied charlie to was italian it was it was real that was a real thing so right see that well there's an maybe... example there of using charisma wrong right mixing lies with truth <laughs> choking charlie exactly. like his accessories well, was like meatballs and he just stuffed yeah. it in his mouth and they're like yeah, that's what it, is. it was just yeah you just like pressed it and this meatball on a string popped out and then you had to put it back in. <laughs> I swear to God, because I know I as bet you well. Can find this thing. Oh, I'm sorry. You God. you you worked at um Olive Garden, so I like <laughs> the the lie could also be that Olive Garden yeah. is not Italian food. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. True. Yeah, yep. <laughs> it is just you know starch and paste. The yeah, restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> yep, totally. Starch yeah. and paste. It was rough, dude. Yeah, I was the food expo there. I made all yeah. the breadsticks that everybody loves. They're all frozen. They're just complete. Uh, they just come in a huge plastic bundle of frozen nonsense. And then they yeah. give you a paintbrush to paint oh, the, stop. the garlic no. butter. <laughs> yeah, no. dude. My child is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's great. It's good food. You should check it out. <laughs> I love that. He's still, he's still supporting it in the end. Yeah. All right. My uh, yeah. turn. My turn. <laughs> yep. My two truths and a lie. Yeah. Like Tove. I've jumped out of a plane. I'm unsure if I've slept with a woman and I've taken fencing classes. Hmm. Uh, okay. Oh, um, okay. Why would you be unsure if you've slept with a woman? Because I was very drunk at the time and I was dating her at the time and it was a, just a night of crazy and I woke up beside her and so I couldn't remember what I did. Okay. Are you still unsure to this day or are you saying you're unsure you were unsure that morning? It's to this day. Okay. Toph, do you have any questions? 
How heavy is that jacket they wear? Fencing. Was it like awkward or did you wear the it's, mask it's, and everything? Or no, you get like, the padding in that, right? You get the full uh-huh. suit and cause like the sword can go anywhere. Right. The, the, the fencing sword. Yeah. But I wouldn't say it's heavy. It feels like you're wearing, it's almost like if you were, I feel like it's the equivalent of like, if you wear those suits that you would do to train a dog to bite on you. Right. Um, yeah. So it's, it's medium weight. Let's say that. Okay. So it's not like metal. It's just like a padding. Like it was no, just padded white suit. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. I, I mean, I got um, my guess. And then when you jumped out of a plane, mm-hmm. uh, which was scarier, the ride up or the ride down? I like the fall down. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like after I dropped, it's like, yeah. well, um, the honestly, it, the scariest part was leading up to the plane. Um, yeah. And then once I'm on the plane, it, it all went away because I was like, there's, I'm not turning back now. So it was it was a walking to the plane actually for me. Fucking a. Um, hmm. Okay, uh, my guess is that you have never taken a fencing class. How about you, Tov? I second that. <laughs> Damn it! You're right. <laughs> yeah. The other it's kind of like a dog suit. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty <laughs> much. I should have chosen the woman thing. I'm gay. That's obvious. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. Well, if there was any example of a human's inability to tell when people are lying. Wait, I won, right? Did I win? Well, I guess you won. Yeah. <laughs> was that Hooray! because of charisma? Am I just, is it, is it a charisma thing or is it just, I'm a better liar? I'm not sure. I haven't. Oh. Well, I think charisma makes you a better liar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that you is the just cliffhanger. Have more charisma than both of us. Me and David are just like antisocial trolls. You're like the real. <laughs> That's not good. I'm the only one studying journalism. <laughs> <laughs> so what? You should yeah. be an antisocial troll for yeah. to be a journalist. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Is it better to be a lying, like a good liar journalist or an antisocial troll? I'm not sure. It's a pretty good question. <laughs> I feel that like antisocial trolls are elements. at least really good listeners, which is probably important for journalism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Is lying. Nice. I think the only good thing about lying for journalism would be learning how to catch somebody lying because you know how to lie, right? Mm. If you know how to do something, yeah. you, it's arguable that you know when people are doing it. Walking lie yeah. detector. Yeah, for sure. From like, from what I can tell, it seems like lying has more to do with inconsistencies than it is to do with people's like mannerisms or like how they're coming across in that moment. It's like, it, it always gets caught in the details I've found. Is that true? Or would you guys agree maybe? It does if you're a trained professional, like a police officer. That's why they do like cross yeah. uh, examining, you know, cross interrogation of people. Yeah. And, they, and then they use lies to get people to lie. So yeah. like that's one of the techniques. So they, they kind of fight fire with fire in that regard. Mm. But honestly, like the best way to tell a successful lie is just confidence. So it, it does yeah. lean on charisma and, and also persistence, you know? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't know much about it. I've never lied. In my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, wow. This was awesome. Uh, yeah. That brings us to the end of today's show. Uh, Tof, did you have did you have anything that you wanted to take away from this conversation? Hmm. Um, no, I mean, I, I really like the, uh, I want to ponder this intersectionality charisma concept. Mm. Like that's a pretty interesting thing. And also the, the concept of uh, like a charisma test, you know, there's yeah. something in there. I mean, I'm sure psychological tests are somewhat on the path of that. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's something I'd like to delve into more on my personal time, honestly. Yeah, it was nice. cool. How about you, Robert? Mine would definitely be looking at charisma as more of a tool mm-hmm. and that it is very like a Spider-Man type thing with great power comes great responsibility. If you have a really strong use of charisma, you really have to use it responsibly and that it is um, complemented by intelligence and wisdom. You know, good old D&D was that got it right is that if you don't have those to back up the charisma, it could be really problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Charismatic yeah. people don't have to roll for initiative. Mm. They just do it. <laughs> they just do it. <laughs> totally. Um, and I guess my takeaway is that thing I mentioned about like, you know, the the very rough charisma test that I developed in two seconds is uh, how well do conversations normally go for you? And that is your your soft check <laughs> for how charismatic right. you are. Yeah. If overall conversations go poorly, 
might need a uh, might need to do some work there. <laughs> right, right. But it, I mean, see that even opens up in a whole other can of worms. Like, what? Is, how do you define yeah. that it went well for you? you know uh, I mean? That's true. That's yeah. true. For the Monetary next show. Gain. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, awesome. Damn. Yeah. So thanks again, Toph. Um, yeah, thank I you. believe you said you didn't have anything to plug, nowhere to nah, follow. Just plugging away at life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, sweet. So thank you to the listener for listening to Tissues of the Day. If you're watching the video version, uh, thank you for that as well. You can watch the video at uh, youtube.com slash C slash bit button. And you can follow me at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. Stay wet, Internet. Drenched. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you.